Okay. Uh, welcome everybody to another edition of the Dad at Arms channel. I'm your host, Dad at Arms. I also go by Colt. Uh, with me today, I have a special guest. This is Ethan Wilson from The Figure in Question. And Ethan is joining us today to kind of shed a little bit of light on something that's been going on in his life. And Ethan is like us, you know, loves toys, loves geek nerd franchises and, and stuff like that. So I'll turn some time over to Ethan and, and kind of let him take it from there. Welcome, Ethan. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm, uh, I run a site called The Figure in Question. Um, it's kind of a daily review site. Uh, just looking at my own personal collection, kind of my own personal interests. Um, I've been running that for just over 10 years. I launched it in 2013. Um, it's just kind of my own private little ramblings that I made public, I guess. Um, you know, I've been a toy collector since I was very young. Um, I was about four, I think, when I got into it all. And, and I've just kind of always hung on to it. Um, I know a lot of people like kind of like fall out of it for a while and stuff. Um, but it, that's not been me, you know, it's pretty much just 20 some odd years of straight collecting. Um, and uh, it's just always kind of been my passion. Um, I kind of started the site to sort of showcase that, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of partially just cause I just love doing it partially to fill some time when I was in college. Um, and, uh, it's, it's just become kind of my, my primary, I think, hobby, you know, it's, it's kind of accented the hobby for me, um, as I've gotten, you know, older and, and, you know, adjusted how I collect. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, um, it's, uh, it's something I'm proud of and, you know, obviously, you know, I, I, I take pride in my work and I want people to see it, but I kind of want to see it on, and to see it sort of on my terms, I guess. Right. right. Um, you, you, you put work into it. Like you said, it's a hobby, but it's, it's also it's, a, passion it's project. a hobby. Yeah. It's a, it's a passion project. Uh, you know, I don't get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, you know, I have a, I have a sponsor, uh, technically, but it's not like they like throw money at me. It's just occasionally they give me a discount on some toys. Right. Um, and you know, even that's like, well, you know, so I'm, I'm buying everything, you know, the stuff on my site that I, there's photographs of and reviews of it's all that's my personal collection, you know, with a few small exceptions. Okay. Um, and I, I put my own, you know, time into it. I have my own photo stage set up at home. I have, you know, you know, I pay for my own camera, my own lighting, all, all that. And, and, uh, you know, I pay for the hosting on my site, everything. Um, it's, it's a labor of love, but it is a labor. Yes. And, um, so, you know, I do become a little protective of my work. Um, in regards to other people uh, using it, um, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, something I've definitely dealt with a few times over the past decade that I've been doing the site um, with a few few different places. Um, I think the most, I think the biggest name um, that I had to deal, well, I didn't deal with it, but just they used my photos. Uh, Toys R Us took one of my photos once. Oh, wow. <laughs> It was like six months before they went out of business. So I was like, it's not really worth contacting anyone. Like the writing was on the wall at that point. So I was like, right. well, what am I going to do? And yeah. um, most of the time though, it's like maybe one or two photos are used. Um, and it's either not big enough of a deal for me to really pursue it, or it's fairly easily resolved. Um, which kind of brings me to, the main thing that's been going on with me the last three months, um, okay. which is that I encountered the single largest use of my work uh, without my permission that I've I've ever encountered um, in my mm -hmm. decade doing what I do. Um, so um, Scott Knightlick of Spectre Creative um, mm -hmm. and other things as well. Um, he runs a YouTube channel. And it was brought to my attention um, by a friend of mine. Um, and I should specify it's, it's a, a real world friend of mine because like online, there's been some discussion. There's I think, like conspiracy theories about someone tipped me off or something. Hmm. Um, I don't, it's just, a, it's just a friend of mine in real life. Like, um, 
had brought to my attention that Scott had been using one of my photos that like, cropped up and showed up in, in one of his thumbnails for one of his videos. Uh, and so I went to investigate that and just determined that, yeah, it was my photo. And then the photos were used in the video as well, proper. Um, so I did a little more digging and discovered, um, I believe it was 81 instances. Oh, wow. Of Scott, of Scott using my work. And, um, and is, is this across like multiple videos or is this? So it was, it was across like 60 some videos, I think. Okay. Um, I don't remember the exact number of videos. It was, I'm pretty sure it was 81 instances um, and 60 some videos. I have a whole post on my website. And, and we'll, details. we'll link to that in the, in the yeah. video description here. So people yeah. can find that and look through that. My, my aim is just to be as, as, as transparent as possible with mm -hmm. all the information I'm providing here. Um, but anyway, there were a lot of uses of my work and none of them were credited. Um, no mention of my site, nothing at all. A lot of them, my, my watermark was cropped out or obstructed. Um, in, in one very odd case, my watermark was actually replaced by an entirely unrelated logo. Wow. Which was very strange. Um, so, you know, I, it, it leaves you kind of in a place and, and I discovered all this over the course of a couple of days, you know, um, I found the first one and I kind of took down the information and was like, okay, let me see what I want to do. And I, I dug deeper and deeper and I kept finding more and more. And um, it, it got to a point where I was like, I, I have to do something about this. Um, so I decided to file claims with YouTube um, on those images. My aim wasn't to take Scott's channel down. Um, it was just to have my work removed. Yeah. Um, to protect your your work to to protect my work you know it's just it's a lot of of usages and and the thing is you know scott's channel's monetized um mm -hmm. he openly talks about how he uses it to promote his his uh specter creative business right i'm seeing somebody use my work and while i was doing it i saw the work of so many other photographers and toy reviewers as well that i recognized and none of them were credited either um so it just left me in not a great headspace about the whole situation. Um, and, you know, you know I'm, let me interject here real quickly. Um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Just for people who are watching, you know, this is, I, like you said, this is your work. This is the work of other people as well, other photographers. Um, yeah. It might not seem like that big of a deal because it's just pictures on the internet that are being used in, in YouTube videos. But at yeah. the heart of it, it's your, it's your intellectual property. You know, you right. took these photos. This is, you know, it's all, you know, hours of work put into this, this stuff. And then yeah. somebody with a monetized channel is using your work and profiting off of it. Mm -hmm. um, with, you know, in the real world, you know, off of the internet, that kind of thing would, you know, yeah, I mean, compensation for people who are, I mean, you know, if we were like out on the on the street selling our wares or something right uh you know and i i had a photo booth or something set up and he was over there selling something else and he came over and took a picture of one of my pictures and held it up and used it to sell his stuff that would be like you can't do that man you know? right right um so that was kind of the thing that was the, the, the kickoff to it was i just i wanted my stuff removed from his channel um i did it incrementally over the course of about 10 days um mm -hmm. i would submit you know, I think I, well, I know I got up to 30 claims. Um, so it's three claims a day. Okay. Um, cause I had taken all the information down. I had it all sitting there and ready to go. Um, so I, you know, get home from work at night, I put in a couple claims and see what happened. And I didn't really know where it was going to go. Um, but it kind of was one of those, it's the least I can do kind of things. Um, after the 10 days, um, Scott's channel was marked as terminated. Okay. It was February 2nd. Um, which honestly, it like, you know, like obviously I, I was submitting claims, so I knew I was having videos taken down. 
but honestly, like I was a little surprised that it like got terminated, terminated. Like, yeah. Um, I know YouTube has like the the three strike policy and and all that, but those types of policies can sometimes be a little vague. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wasn't sure, you know, and I'd heard you know, nothing from Scott and nothing at all. So the channel, you know, was terminated, just gone. And Scott had made some post on, I think he made a post on t Twitter, um, you know, saying, oh, uh, he didn't know what had happened and that he was going to look into it and he was sure it would be resolved quickly. Um, and I didn't hear anything from him until it was the Sunday after his channel went down. Um, I got an email from him late that night. Uh, it was about 10 p.m. my time, which I think is also 10 p.m. his time. But um, okay. uh, this is late. You know, it's late on Sunday night, and I yeah. didn't have a chance to get back to him. Um, sure. By that point, you know, his channel had gone down, and I think I said it wasn't my aim to take his channel down. So I, I felt a little sorry. Like, I was like, oh, maybe this has gone too far. Um. So when he emailed me, I was like, well, I'm going to try and work with this guy, you know, if I can. Now, is, um, it, is, is this the first time that you'd been in contact with him is when he, this is the, him? this is the first time that I had been in contact with Scott. I, I had no prior dealings with Scott before this at okay. all. Like I hadn't even interacted with him online or any of that. I knew him okay. from his time at Mattel, but like only as a person who collected the lines he worked on. That was really it. Yeah. Um, so my first, you know, actual interaction with him is email he sent me um, after his channel went down. Um, you know, and it's it's the thing is like the email, and again, I, I put all the emails in my in my article about this. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's written like a press release. <laughs> it's yeah, it's an it's an interesting email to read, you know, from someone who's trying to to work with you, but. You know, I'm like, I'm going to try and work with him. I'm going to try to put, you know, the best foot forward and see what we can do. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, before I got a chance to get back in touch with him, um, another YouTuber, um, and the channel is That Junk Man. Okay. Um, got, he got involved. Um, so he contacted me on Twitter the following morning asking about the situation almost immediately posted uh tweets from he has two twitter accounts okay. um so junk man almost immediately posted like right after he sent me the message posted uh, tweets on both of the accounts pretty much blasting me being like you know the ethan wilson of the figure in question has has taken down you know scott scott's channel and you need to let him know not to do this and i don't remember the exact specific phrasing but just kind of calling me out. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, it's all going on on, a, on Monday, and I can't stress enough that that the site is like it's my hobby. Yeah. So you I have a job. You have a family. I have a I have a job. I have a family. Yeah. I don't I don't keep up with it um, during working hours, during family hours. You know. Yeah. It's kind of my evening time. I'll sit down and, and work on it. So I didn't, you know, respond to this guy right away. I didn't respond to the tweets. I didn't do anything. Um, he emailed me, the junk man emailed me later that day. Um, and he let me know he was, he was planning to do a video about the subject. Okay. And um, that, you know, he was like, I'd like to get your side. But he sent me this email, you know, again, it's it was, he sent me this email five o'clock in the afternoon or in the evening. Mm -hmm. I'm on my way home from work. Then I have dinner with the family, you know, got to get the kids to bed. Um, so I did not get a chance to respond. Like I saw the email and I'm like, I'm, I'll get to that. I'll try to, I'll try to draft up something to say to him. But he had the, he had a video up and ready up and posted within three hours. Okay. Um, it's a video is, I mean, it, it's rough. It's, it's 12 minutes of him calling me nasty names, insulting my work, um, and encouraging his viewership to harass me. 
Um, and what really made it rough was that he's also spreading misinformation about the situation. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I, I made 30 claims um, on Scott's channel. And Junkman, when he contacted me, he had one number as like under 100. And then it was, and he posted one of his tweets was about 100. And then his next tweet was 100. By the time we got to the video, he's consistently referring to it as over 100 strikes. Okay. And I'm like, I didn't. You know, I didn't make over 100 strikes. I made 30. Yeah. Um, not that, you know, I mean, more than three is really what counts, but. And so, so when, he's putting out, so he puts out this video. He's, you know, yeah. he, he emails you, says he wants your side of the story, but then doesn't wait for your side of the story. He, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, pretty much the way he phrased it in the email was that he hoped he would hear from me before he made the video, but okay. he didn't really give me specifics of when he was planning to make the video aside from about to do a video. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, I, I don't know. Um, and again, the tone of the video is very, very much like, I, I don't really know that providing my side of the story would have drastically changed mm -hmm. how he approached the video. Um, cause he's very much on, you know, on Scott's side of it for right. the whole time. Um, so yeah, he's, he's, you know, at this point he's muddied the waters with the, the the numbers he's putting out the information he's providing um he at that time he he was the one that that put out my my email address um to to tell people to contact me um which is actually how i knew that scott had been in contact with him because my email address was only shared with with scott right so scott was the only other person that knew that i was the one that had made those claims that that was my email address yeah um and so, yeah, he's, you know, he, he provides all that information. He's saying it's over hundred claims. He identified all the claims as being false. Um, he posted, he put my images in his video and tried to like date me into copyright striking him. Um, and then, you know, like I said, calls me nasty names, makes fun of my work. And then, uh, yeah. Tells so, people, so, so, yeah. So, so he, he basically, you know, knowingly baited you to by using your work. He yeah, but he shared your personal information with with his followers, and yeah. you know, obviously said things that were unkind and spread yeah. misinformation about the topic itself and the situation yeah. that was going on. So, you know, definitely an incendiary way to go about things. Very much so, um, and I mean he. I mean, I, I got I got contacted by people, you know, on on his ba on, on you know on his account. Yeah. Um, you know, I got emails and tweets and comments and did, you know did every, pretty much every platform. <laughs> so, um, what was the nature of, is, of of the emails and messages and stuff? I mean, there were kind of two splits. There was like kind of a split. There were two types of email or two two types of messages I was getting. I kind of got the ones that were just, you know, very short and just kind of F you, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then I get kind of the more long, like, like, um, like, you know, trying to verbally talk me down, I guess. Right. You know, um, just a lot of, you know, leave them alone and why would you do this and how dare you? And, you know, again, verbal dressing down. Um, were there, were there any, any actual threats in the messages? No actual, posted? no actual threats. And, and okay. it, it is worth noting that one of the things, you know, to, to hold it is the, the, the bad thing that that junk man did is, is encourage people to harass me. Mm -hmm. Um, it's worth noting that while both Scott and, and drunk men encouraged harassment from their viewers towards me, the actual harassment, like the actual response from their viewers, like the actual, like the harassment itself was very like punchy and kind of like, you know, screw you or, you know, definitely attacking me. Um, 
but it, but it was either internet tough guys, right? Like tech internet tech tough guys. guys. And, and ultimately it was not that many people. Um, okay. It was honestly a pretty lackluster response. Okay. Um, it doesn't make you feel good. No. Um, you know, especially because it would usually come in like big bursts. Like, you know, it would be six hours of like just a bunch of messages and then nothing. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, so it's, you know, that, I think that that, that sort of did charge me up a little bit though. Um, you know, and, and, and of course, Jungman's video was very, like you said, incendiary, you know, and really upsetting. Mm -hmm. Um, once, you know, once Jungman's video had gone up, I was like, well, I, yeah, I feel like I have to do something. Yeah. Um, so I did reach back out to Scott at that time. Um, and, and my primary focus initially was just trying to figure out where the numbers that junk man was, was spreading were coming from, um, you know, cause he's pretty firmly out there going like, it's over a hundred claims. And I'm like, where, where does that number come from? Yeah. Um, cause I'm also like sitting there being like, well, if it's over a hundred claims, how do you know they're all from me? You know, like yeah. what, if there are over a hundred claims, maybe you've got, you know, 70 Other claims people. I don't know yeah. about, I, yeah. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so I, I reached back out to Scott and, and, and I kind of told him, oh, like, I, I was gonna, you know, I told him, like, I was gonna reach out to you. I hadn't had a chance. Junk man came in. It's gotten really ugly. Um, and so that makes this awkward, you know? Yeah. Um, but I was like, you know, but I know you're not, you're not junk man, you know, you're a separate entity. And so let me try and work with you. Um, so I asked him, I was like, you know, Jung Man says he, he's saying over a hundred. I'm kind of wondering where this number came from. You know, can you give me any information about your interactions with him? Do you know about the claims he's making? Um, and so he got back to me and he, he kind of said, well, it, he, at that point he was like, well, I, I don't know anything about what Jung Man's saying. Okay. Um, I have no knowledge and, and, and I can't speak to his claims kind of danced around where the numbers came from um and just sort of was like well you know junk man contacted me he and junk man both had the same like kind of like oh i don't really know the guy but like we email like once a year um okay it was very like kind of and i don't know if they know each other but like it was just they both kind of went to the like well we email like once a year and i'm like like is it like a yearly check-in or i don't know yeah um but he's like, well, junk man asked me and I gave him your information and I, I told him, I thought you made about a hundred claims. And I'm like, okay. Um, you know, so that was, you know, we're kind of slowly working through it. Um, but junk man's still at it. He's posting on Twitter constantly. He is tagging YouTube in, he is, he's getting everybody riled up. He's still going, he's still saying, you know, over a hundred fake claims I'm getting, you know, I'm getting tweets from people like, well, you know, I got a tweet from one guy that was like, is it true that you submitted over a whole, over a hundred false cl uh, claims on Spectre Creative's channel to take his channel down? <laughs> and I'm like, well, no, uh, because none of that's true. Like <laughs> every yeah. piece of information in that, in that statement is actually false. But, um, so I reached back out to Scott again to just kind of be like, Hey, I, I need you to clear this up um you know it, it's gotten really out of hand and any resolution we we could have had between the two of us is now there's extra people involved and it yeah it's confusing and you know i said there's there's multiple numbers floating out there everyone seems to think that my claims are false um and, and you know i was like junk man's really you know really vouching for you here um you know and he had said in his previous email he said you know he didn't know what junk man had done and he didn't really know junk man's side of it so I, I you know i was like well, here's all the stuff junk man's been saying and you know um but that was when i kind of said to him like if we're going to move forward i do need you to clear the situation up and that was when i asked him you know i said i need you to to either um you know i need you to resolve this this junk man situation and either contact him directly and ask him to back off and rescind his comments or say that he's not speaking for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I need you to say that it was, you know, like it was only 30 claims. I can prove it was 30 claims. I can show screenshots of, you know, the claims I've made. 
Um, so I need you to say it was 30 claims, not over 100, because that's, you know, and I need you to acknowledge that the claims, I have valid claims I'm making, you know. Um, and so uh, so he did. I mean, he, he went on Twitter and he posted the, the three statements, sort of. I mean, he did kind of bare minimum, but I wasn't going to get picky. Um, right. And so I was like, okay, you know, um, you did what I asked. I'm going to, I'm going to try and work with you. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's worth noting in every email up to this point, Scott has said to me that, you know, I will totally take care of your, your, your needs. I'll make sure that you're taken care of and, uh, you know, we'll get this resolved. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So, you know, so I re re rescind the claims, his channel goes back up and that's when things start to shift. So suddenly Scott, who's been so eager to help me the whole time, you know, so sorry that junk man did what he did. So sorry. I had to go through all this, um, starts asking me for more and more information, you know, um, cause I provided him with, you know, I, after I rescinded the claims, I provided him with a nice spreadsheet I'd built. It was like, here's all the information you'll need to find the videos that had my stuff. You know, can you either, you know, I, I wasn't even really like strict about what he needed to do. I was like, I, you know, if you want to remove my stuff from those videos, that's fine. If you want to just add some form of attribution, that's fine. Um, I, I had asked if he could to replace the photos that he cropped my watermark out of with versions that had the watermark still. But even on that point, I think I would have been willing to kind of um, negotiate a little bit. But you know, that was, I sent him all this information and um, he got back to me and he was just like, well, I'm looking through your claims or through the photos. And, and there were, he's like, well, some of them don't have watermarks, which is true. Um, There's a period of time in my site where I wasn't doing watermarks. It doesn't change the, my photos, but they, right, they didn't right. have, you know, my watermark on them. He's like, so how do I know they're yours? And I'm like, cause they're on my site. Cause I gave him like URLs, to like where they were posted on my site too. Yeah. Um, and then he's like, and then like, he's like, also like two of the fit of the photos um, you have claimed are mine. Actually, I took them and I'm like, okay, well, I know my own work. Um, and then it sort of just leads into, so what I'm going to need from you is, is filings of copyright and trademark for all of the uh, photos that you're wanting me to adjust. And I'm like, okay. Um, Cause of course the thing is that for photography, you don't have to file um, mm -hmm. copyright, you know, for, for photography, it's in, from the moment of uh, it's referred to as fixation. Yeah. You, you know, that's, that's your photo. You took it. Um, the reason for this is of course that professional photographers would literally be spending all of their time filing <laughs> copyrights right. otherwise. Right. So for every, um, every photo they've ever taken. Right. The ABO, it's like, yeah, okay. Go in, you know, if you're a wedding photographer every day, you're just in there filing over a thousand copyrights, you know, like it's, it's insane. So, um, you know, so yeah, he's asking me for information I don't have. And I'm like, I don't really know. And I'm still kind of, I'm a novice at so much of this. Yeah. You know, I know, I know my side of it, but I don't know the bigger picture. And so I'm like trying to keep my cool and stuff. And, and, um, so I'd, you know, I'd emailed him and I'd asked him, Hey, can you just, you know, for the time being, can you just set the videos, the 30 videos to, to private? Um, and we can discuss the specifics. We can figure out, you know, how to approach this. Um, you know, and then I told him, I told him in advance, I was like, I actually have, cause you know, I submitted the 30, but I had like another like 30 claims I could potentially make. Right. Um, but I told him, you know, I said, if you set these 30 to private, I promise you, I won't submit anymore. I won't submit the, the additional claims I have, you know, obviously I'm not going to try and screw you over that way. Um, between like right before i sent him that email um he had gone back on twitter and i guess he had he had tried to post a video and found out that he didn't actually have access to his dashboard yet he was still mm -hmm. in limbo okay um so he he posted a tweet um pretty much just being like well i had a video but i can't upload it because i don't have access to my dashboard yet um in the meantime Junkman has a video that sums up my feelings about it. 
um, pretty well. And so he's he's directing people to this video that and this is the know, same video. This is the same video. This is the tax me and 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 encourages people to harass me. And this is a video that he pre you know just just earlier that day has has so so now he's now. publicly co-signing the content of right. of this video of of junk man's video um, mm -hmm. and you know and thanking people for for their support and thanking them for what they did right um and I'm like okay. And then he got back to me the next morning and it was like, oh, I don't have access to my dashboard, but I'll definitely, you know, take care of that when I get it. And I'm like, okay, but I'm already like, well, I saw your tweet. So like, this is now awkward. Yeah. Like, you know, it's the first of a few instances of him seemingly not acknowledging that I can, you know, that his tweets are public and I can see mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, a couple he, days. He, 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 it, it seemed, you know, to me, it seems like his communication with you at this point is not in good faith. He's telling you one thing, yeah. but then publicly doing other things contrary right. to what you're trying to work through. Yeah, you know, and then that's yeah. kind of where I'm starting. I'm starting to see kind of the starting to see it kind of fall apart. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know what you know. So it was a couple more days, and um, then he sent me another email telling me, "Oh, I got access to my dashboard back." Um. And it's it's so surreal because it's like he's like good news. Um, there's no copyright violations in my videos. Like I, I use YouTube's copyright checker, and there's there's no violations, so I don't have to do anything. And I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also like it's like YouTube's like YouTube's automatic checker. Like even if you if you look at it, like it'll even be like, yeah, this will not pull every copyright claim like every it won't pull every violation it only pulls certain ones right. just because your video doesn't doesn't have any flags automatically doesn't mean that it can't be flagged doesn't mean there isn't copyrighted material it just means it's not in our system you know right they're automated checkers for like you know it, it's for like big corporations like disney sure, or, sure. You, know, that, you know it's like yeah if i use if i use footage from indiana jones you know yes the exactly. automatic checker is going to be like that's not you can't use that you know but if I use somebody's photo of Indiana Jones and, you know, but you know, he's, he's, you know, he, he's pretty much telling me I don't have to do anything. And I'm like, okay. Um, you know, after telling me multiple times, he would totally take care of me. Right. Um, same time that he sends me this email, he uploads the video, I guess that he wanted to upload previously. And the video is just him pretty much. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't directly name me, name me in that video. Um, but given that he's already directed people to Junkman's video that does directly name me, kind of, you know, you can put it together. Yeah. Um, but he's, you know, pretty much says that I held his channel hostage, um, that I, you know, I filed these false claims. Um, everything he did was protected by fair use. I had no right to claim it. Um, and that he had only made the posts to appease me, you know, the, the Twitter posts um and that you know that he he only did that so i would stop holding his channel hostage um you know so these two pieces kind of make me go so this guy's got no interest in actually helping me this time mm -hmm. you know so i reached back out to youtube um because you can't you know you can't automatically refile a claim right like once you've put a claim in on a video youtube goes yeah no no you can't just refile that that's you know it's to prevent abuse of the system which right I right totally get. right um but you can contact them directly and be like, hey, can you look into this? Which they they did. Um, so I, I contact them, explain the situation, gave them the list I had prepared for Scott with all my information. Um, and they got back to me pretty quickly and were just like, cool. Um, yeah, we're taking those videos right back down. Um, so yeah, he... he so they, they took the videos back down. His channel's marked for termination again. And that's when he starts reaching back out to me. Mm -hmm. um, I got three emails in the space of about six hours. And they kind of like cover the different aspects, I guess, of, of, of Scott. The first one's like very much like kind of trying to like, like talk me down, like talk down to me, you know, like the yeah. first email is like, I thought I told you to only submit claims one at a time. Like, like, okay. Um, 
the second one is like his professional appeal, I guess. Like, you know, his profession, he's appealing to me professional to professional. Mm -hmm. Where he's like, I have a I have a book launch on Friday and and you know, I need my channel for that. So could you please give me my channel back so I can have my book launch? I'm like, okay. And his last one's just titled Please. And like he like this is his like emotional plea to me where he's like you you know like i feel like my legs have been cut off and i'm begging with you and i'm pleading with you and i'll do anything to get my channel back and you know this is how i feed my family and like it's like okay and you're starting to feel sorry for the guy until you check his twitter feed from literally the same period of time mm -hmm. because while he's sending me these emails he's posting on twitter on the public side that i am blackmailing him so he, he puts out his post. He says, Ethan, Ethan Wilson is, is blackmailing me. And I'm like, you know, blackmail, blackmail is a federal crime. Right. Um, you know, and so here's this guy, he's, he's accusing me of blackmail, you know, because I asked him to remove my content from his channel. Or at least credit your content right right you remove it or, or credit it you know that's all i want and um so yeah he's accusing me of blackmail um you know at that point i'm like i can't like i had started to draft a response to his first email mm -hmm. and then the second email came in so i'm trying to adjust the second the first response to fit both emails so that i can like you know i'm trying to respond to him and the third email comes in and i'm like i don't even know how to respond to this one and then i see the tweet and I'm like, great, now you've accused me of blackmail. I can't talk to you now. Like, I can't even, yeah. like, I'm like, I now have to stop talking to you because I can't put myself out there that way. I can't, like, right. make you myself. You protect yourself now. You know, now I have to be like, okay, cut off contact, say nothing to him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, from that point forward, I stopped communicating with him directly. He stopped communicating with me directly. Um but he like so the 30 claims he submitted um counter notifications through youtube on them saying you know oh it's fair use um which led to the uh, and again i i have the screenshots of the counter notification statements that he supplied on the on this article i wrote because it, it's i mean it, you start to see the utter insanity of it mm -hmm. um you know again he gets back with the 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 blackmail accusations so many times um he starts claiming that you know it's it's, it's like the, there's a whole like his initial like defenses that that he didn't know they were my photos when he used them and then like that morphs into that using my photos is fair use because he's running an educational channel and then that morphs into that he asked me for copyright information on my photos and i never supplied it to him so how is he supposed to know they're my photos and how you know and then that morphs into that because my photos are of trademarked characters that i can't copyright them at all and then that morphs into that he doesn't actually know they're my photos and anyone can slap a watermark on a photo and that doesn't prove it's theirs and then it's like his final like version of it in the original batch of 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 claims is that i had i had taken photos like it was like he mashed everything together and then added a new element where it was like i had taken photos that couldn't be copyrighted because they were just like they were just other companies characters on a white background so they couldn't be copyrighted but also the photos that i had taken which couldn't be copyrighted weren't the photos that were in his videos like he like his last one was like they're just like similar looking to the photos that were in my videos and i'm like i you know it's just like how many different versions it, it, i think for me it's it's crazy because i feel like if he had just said it's fair use to use your photos i would have fought him a lot less sure like i would have been like i would have been like all right whatever you know agree to disagree i'm not gonna fight you but he didn't he had this whole cacophony of explanations and and he was it was like he was like preaching to the rafters and right it's like it's it's not that complicated a situation um 
but you know youtube doesn't really check those i guess they just look for like you know they oh it said fair use so um and then they let it through you know it eliminates their liability they pretty much they told me like well you can sue them if you want to and if you sue them we'll leave the videos down and his channel will go away like, okay well like i don't really want to again like my thing is i, I didn't want to take his channel down i didn't want i don't want to ruin the guy's life i just right. want credit for my work and so i was like Which whatever seems reasonable yeah I, I was like whatever it's not a big deal i'll just i didn't fight it um but then he gets his channel back after two weeks and immediately jumps right back on the train of of attacking me and 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 you know again he puts out a video where he accuses me of a blackmail again um you know and talks about how my claims are aren't valid and how i can't you know and and, and i have no right to do this and he is totally protected and and he's allowed to do whatever he wants and pretty much that's the whole thing and so i'm like okay and i'm like i'm sitting here and i'm like i still got you know another what 30 30 claims i didn't do anything with mm -hmm. like um so i was like well if you're gonna be if you're gonna if you're not gonna drop it i'm not gonna drop it kind of was where i was right um so i submitted another you know another three from the batch and you know he got marked for, for he didn't get marked for termination because he, he countered them really quickly that time but um you know it's kind of this little game of cat and mouse and and then what ultimately he, he ended up putting out that video his, his book that he was going to launch you know he, he put out the video about it and it turns out it's it's a graphic novel with ai generated art okay which I can't even like that was one of like I, I kind of threw in the towel at that point because I'm like I can't. Mm -hmm. I, how do you compete with somebody who does stuff like this? Right. Um, kind of my my thing is I'm like ah nothing I can throw at him is is worse than what he's going to do to himself you know. Sure. Um. So I kind of did throw in the towel at that point. Initially, you know, um, I kind of was like whatever bygones be bygones I'll let the old videos slide. Because one of his points that he kept making was like, that, oh, I was making claims on really old videos, and his old videos didn't matter to his channel. And I'm like, that's weird. Then why did you make them? Um, so yeah, but, you know, but he kind of kept going um, with the, the the graphic novel thing, and people were attacking him for that, and so he didn't like that. So he keeps you know pivoting, um, and then he's you know he's putting up new videos and you know one of them comes up and there's another of my photos in the thumbnail and i'm like like okay i was gonna let the old one slide but you know you you're still using my work after everything we went through yeah um so i put a strike in on that one you, yeah like it almost seems like yeah. he's now it feels like, you know purpose. it feels like he's right you know so i put a strike in on that one um he did it again i put another strike in so now he's back up to three um, and that's kind of where the latest, the latest bit is, um, just before the, the AI art graphic novel announcement was when I had put up the about Spectre creative post on my site. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got a little bit of traction on it, but not a ton. Um, but every time that he kind of, you know, he brings me back into it, I get a little bit more traction on it, I guess. And um i just you know so i'm like okay but i'm still getting like some like a lot of the traction on this on on that post has been positive um but i'm still getting a little bit of pushback on some of it mm -hmm. and so it's like i don't i don't know and people who aren't really reading what i wrote they're just kind of scrolling to the bottom and believing their angry comment right um but yeah but you know but he's he's still using my work so i'm like I, you know I mean, and you know, I only submitted them one at a time this time. Like I didn't do a whole batch of 30. Um, but like, I guess one of the problems I've really encountered with Scott is he just, he keeps changing the story. Mm -hmm. You know, every time you think you've found a level playing ground and saying, you know, okay, here, here we are, he'll go, oh no, 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 new development. Um, 
So my original, you know, originally I made 30 claims. And junk man came in and said over 100, but we got it back down to 30. I then reinstated those 30 claims, still at 30. But Scott, that was when, you know, he accused me of blackmail. He's over there saying I had made 59 claims. I'm like, still just the 30. Mm -hmm. um, over the course of the next week, he he not, he jumped that number up to like 91. Okay. I'm like, still just the 30. Um, and then he, when he was writing more counter notifications to YouTube, it was up to 92. Um, and then he did uh, an interview on a podcast where he said it was 93. And most recently, after this last couple batches, the last couple of them I did, he's now up to 104 claims, is what he's saying. From the, initial, from the initial 30. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think, you know, I'm at counting, counting the ones I've done since the original 30, I'm up to 35. Okay. But he's saying 104. So I'm just sort of left here going like, where's the, where's this number coming from? You know, where's it coming from, you know? And it becomes, I, I think that's become the biggest problem with, with trying to deal with Scott on this, on this topic is he'll keep little parts of the truth, you know, he'll, he'll keep some of it true but then he'll just manufacture wholesale just mm -hmm. entire chunks um you know again regarding the podcast because he's done a couple with one of the podcasts he was on he discussed the situation with me and he's now claiming you know he's now claiming that um he that i never provided him with a list of the videos that were infringing um, he's claiming that he reached out to me and offered to do a whole video, you know, highlighting my site, and, which he did no such thing, you know, <laughs> but he's, he's saying he did this thing and I'm like, well, no, you didn't. Um, you know, and then of course it's, it's, it's all about the Scott, very Scott centered, like kind of the, the humble brag kind of thing. Right. Right. Where he's, he's talking about it. He's like, well, I offered to do a video focusing on this guy's site, which would be really good for him because, you know, mm -hmm. bring him a lot more viewership. And I'm like, well, Scott, you and I don't have drastically different viewership. <laughs> like, it's right. not me like tooting my own horn and being like, oh, I have a great viewership. It's more me saying, Scott, you don't, you don't have great viewership. Because um, I ran the numbers, you know, because his you know, YouTube views are public. Mm -hmm. I compared them against my numbers and we're pretty comparable. So I'm like, you know, the whole I could bring you new. And it's like, it's such a weird angle to take. And, um, you know, so that he's adding that to it. He's saying that I never responded to him, which I mean, I have the screenshots on my site yeah, that yeah. show not only that I responded to him, but that he responded to me yeah. about, yeah. about the, the, the contents of the, of the document I sent him, you know? Right. Um, and he's even posted publicly regarding some of the photos that I had claimed. Like he made Twitter posts about like, this is one of the photos that, that Ethan claimed. And in his, one of his YouTube videos about me, he shows another photo and says, this is another photo that he claimed. And, um, you know, he's like, it's just like, he's not even keeping up with his own version of the story. He's, yeah. he's changing, you know, um, his most recent, because he's using, I guess, the, the community tab on YouTube to, to make posts as well. Um, and so he made a post there. And in that one, he, so that's where, the, that's where the 104 number comes from. Um, but he's also saying that, you know, that I haven't been responding to him. And then he like, then he goes on further to be like, and he hasn't even responded to my attorneys. And I'm like, what attorneys, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I feel like if I had been, if I had been contacted by Scott's attorneys, I would know. Right. And if, and if I get contacted by an attorney, I am going to respond to that. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to blow that off and be like, oh, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, like, no, I mean, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, and I mean the same, the same post he's, and he's also like, and it's just, you, you start to see like Scott, I don't know if it's, he doesn't understand certain things or, or what, but. Like he's posting in that same post, he posts my email again 
and says, you know, contact him. He's posted my email twice in it. And his defense on that, like when people are like, dude, you shouldn't be posting his email address. Like that's, that's not cool is, well, it's a public email address because it's posted on his website. And it's like, that's like saying that it's okay to give people my home address because it's on the side of my house. Like it's not, you know, back in the day that would be like saying I can hand out the phone and phone number, this phone number to anybody because it's in the phone book. Like exactly. Yeah. You know, just because things are accessible doesn't mean that they are. It doesn't mean that you can just target people at them. You know? Right. With, with um, the obvious intent of what he's trying to do. Right. You know, to, to get people to, to badger me about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then again, it's, an, and then it's like, it's always this, like, he gets very, like, proud of himself because he'll he'll rile people up and then i'll get two emails and that's it i'm like that was the most recent you know the end of this youtube that the the youtube community post he made he said you know contact this guy contact this guy i got two emails and i'm like okay and like they're both like they're not even like like i mean at this point they're not even nasty it's just like please give scott his channel back please and i'm like like I'm also I'm like I'm not in a position to do that anymore. Like right. I tried to work with the guy. He, you know, the second he had his channel back, he was blasting me, you know, and, right. and, and calling me stupid and saying that I didn't understand copyright law. How do you how do you work with that? Right. You know. Um, you know, and the more the more I deal with Scott, the more I see the reputation he's built over the years mm-hmm. um you know because again I, I i knew scott when he was at mattel like right. I, I, you know, I knew of scott at mattel um and i know that he had his detractors at that time pretty hardcore um i wasn't really one of them at the time i think i was just sort of like like i wasn't like yeah scott but i was like just sort of like yeah whatever i don't care one way or the other um but I knew that there were always like some, there's always weirdness around him. Yeah. And now, you know, now the more I look into it, the more I'm like, yeah, I think the weirdness is just him. You know, like I think, yes, maybe some people take it too far, but sure. But he encourages it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he, he, he just, he's, he's unwilling to compromise on anything. Um, because he's got to have his vision, but also his vision keeps changing. You know, his, his vision is just whatever he thought of at the moment. And you can kind of see it in everything he does. Like, you know, the, the going back to the, the graphic novel he's doing, it's like, yeah, I did an AI illustrated graphic novel. And you're like, that's a terrible idea. Why would you do that? And he's like, cause I don't know how to draw. And I'm like, hire okay. an artist, hire an artist. Right. Well, artists are expensive. It's like, then you shouldn't be making a graphic novel. Like, um you know that's the thing is it's like there's always this like veneer of just like well i did it yeah i did it all myself you know i did it all myself um and the success is mine i can't be Mm -hmm. you know he can't be a team player right um you know you see that in his in his dealings with like the masters of the universe stuff Mm -hmm. where he's not content to be the guy who was part of the line that you know helped save the brand he he can't he can't be there just being like hey masters of the universe classics like revitalized masters of the universe and made it a a viable property and that's why we have all the stuff we have now for it you know no he has to be like no masters universe classics was the best masters line and i was the one that spearheaded it all and it's this thing you know and i'll i'll give him his kudos where they're deserved i obviously have the classics castle gray skull i've got classics right. behind me like yeah i was there for all that but now right. it shifted from like you said you know it's he's not content to be a part of the larger story of mass universe right. toys now it's his narrative now that he's been talking about and this is all public you know he's released multiple videos of that of this over the past two years about how masters of the universe is going to fail because he's not at the helm and he's not right guiding, he's not guiding the ship Right. Kind he's he's not guiding the ship. And so it, it, it can't possibly it's this this whole like vibe of like it this can't possibly succeed without me. Right. Things can't possibly work without me. And 
And, you know, and I think in his efforts to perpetuate that, he also severely downplays the work of other people. Right. Um, you know, I mean, the whole thing about Masters of Universe Classics is like, you know, Masters of Universe Classics and DC Universe Classics both, you know, yeah, they're, they're great lines and they did really well and they were, you know, huge successes at the time. Mm -hmm. And Scott was a part of that, obviously, but like Masters of the Universe, especially DC Universe, somewhat, Four Horsemen, like, were like, it's like, yeah, people bought that, you know, people were buying these lines because the Four Horsemen sculpted them. Nobody was buying the line because Scott was brand managing. Like, yeah, we were showing up for the artistry behind it, not the brand right. behind it. And it feels a little bit like Scott's, like, you know, Scott's the, the band manager who thinks that he's the lead guitarist. Like, <laughs> like he's like, yeah, we we kick some ass out there. Like, mm -hmm. everybody loves us. And it's like, Scott, everybody loves the band. Right. You know, a lot of people don't know who you are. Right. And he, I mean, he sure tried to make sure that people knew who he was. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of just, again, you see, like, in retrospect of, like, having dealt with him, like, person to person, like, I, things yeah. that I wrote off as being a little bit more innocent initially uh, seem less so. You know, you look at stuff like the Lieutenant Spectre and the Mighty Spectre figures. Right. And, and you're like, okay, uh, it was a little cute, little innocent, like, oh, I got my own figure. But then you kind of like look at it and you're like, except that it feels like you're kind of shoving, you know, like, I mean, with, with, with Lieutenant Spectre, you're literally shoving your face in front of people. Like, mm -hmm. look, it's me, you know? Um, you know, where it's like, you know, like I, I have to be, you know, and it's like the, the four horsemen's faces weren't on Masters of the Universe figures. Like, right. They didn't, they didn't have to have that kind of recognition. They just showed up and did the work and, right. you know, got the recognition for it. And, um, and, you know, it's one thing, obviously it's everybody, everybody, every toy fans dream to have their own action figure based on them. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, there's nothing wrong with that. And I have nothing wrong right. with him putting out a, I, uh, the mighty specter toy and i think obviously based with, on him with both of those my problem really with those releases is not that they exist it is not that he used his position to get them made no it's that when people said hey you use this position to get these made and i don't know how i feel about that he he resorted to like you know it's, it's his response it's like it's attacking people and and, right. and 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 subterfuge and trying to change the narrative and like well i had to and it's like dude just say I'm a huge Masters of the Universe fan, and I got the opportunity to get two figures made of me, mm -hmm. and I went for it. At it. And, yeah. and you know, the thing is, some people are still going to be pissed off at you. Like sure, some people sure. are still going to be like, "How dare you?" But most people, I would wager, are going to go, "I get it," and move on. Right. You know. But again, Scott's not content to. He's not content to have have any sort of vulnerability. Yeah. Um. You know, in my situation with him, I mean, the thing is, if he had, after the strikes got hit and his channel was down and he and I worked together, if he had come out and said, hey, there was a mix up, I was using somebody else's work, I thought it was fair use, obviously, I was mistaken, we're working together to make it fixed, to get it fixed, you know, to make it better, um, that, you know, I, I would have had no problems, I, I would have. I would have been, you know, I would have come out and said, "Hey, Scott's working with me. You know, we're we're making this work. We're 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 working together to make sure that this gets resolved amicably." Mm -hmm. Well, and it gets to that point where, you know, like you said at the beginning of all of this, what started all of this is you wanted you wanted your work to be respected, whether right, you know, take down my pictures or give me credit for the work I've done. You know, yeah. and that can go to any type of outcome as long as people are amiable to get the best outcome for all parties involved. You right. Know, I take pictures. I take toy pictures all the time. I have them posted all over Instagram. I don't have watermarks. If somebody was using right. my pictures, I'd be okay with them using my pictures. Just drop my name once in a while. And that's, that's my thing. It might, you know, in my, I have a statement on my site that explains my photo policy, you know, mm -hmm. and it just says like, I just need to know that you're using it. I just need you to give me a link back to that. And I've worked with people who have asked to use my photos in the past, and I 
I'm very easy to work with on that stuff. You know, people, it's like, if you reach out to me and say, can I use your photo? I'm not going to be like, no, like, you know, it's like, yeah, just tell me what you're doing and, and just give me a link or, or just give me some sort of credit for, for it. Yeah. And, and then, you know, I'm it's, good. It, it, yeah. It's more or less a common courtesy, you know? Right. Yeah. That, that's, that's it. And, 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 Scott, I can, and yeah, I can understand the frustration that you have because, you know, it seems like there's just this lack of accountability or a willingness to be accountable. Right. To any notion of mistakes on his part. Right. You know, it's not even that it was malicious. I'm sure it wasn't malicious on his right. part. Right. Yeah. You know, that's the thing is it's like he talks about and he even talks about he's like, well, I just go into Google image search and I just pull images. And it's like, sure. okay, well, Scott, you you can't you can't do that. You mm -hmm. know, and I'm not saying like that you're deliberately like, I'm going to, you know, it's like, you can't do that. You need to now acknowledge that that's a bad practice. Um, right. It's a, it's an innocent practice, you know, initially, mm -hmm. you know, I think, I think there's a lot of people who just don't fully understand. It's like, no, you can't just like go into Google images and save an image and then just use it. Right. You know, you, there is, but you know, once you're confronted with it, it's then your responsibility to, uh, be culpable right. to be, yeah, you know yeah. you know to say oh right sorry my bad yeah um you know and, and then like a lot of scott's defenders have have really like stuck with the, the you know well if i had reached out to him first he's a good guy he would have taken care of it and i'm like all of regardless behavior, of who and that's the thing regardless of who reached out to who first you've been in contact yeah. with him you tried to right. make it work i did try to i should try to make it work and and yeah. It's like okay well you took his channel down and so maybe he was upset i'm like okay but flip side i was upset because he was using a lot of my work you know so yeah. we both kind of came into this discussion a little upset with each other i put i put my upset aside to try and work with him and he did not right you know when i had the upper hand i still tried to work with scott right. i still tried to to make it better and when he had the upper hand he immediately went i don't have to do anything for you right and right that's that's the difference in our approaches sure um and it's it's really rotten you know i think mm -hmm. it could have been a really good chance to i don't know to 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 make something better out of all of this and at um, the very least it probably didn't have to evolve into what it is now god no right? no and and who, who i, I, I even that? say Right. And I even say in, in one of my emails to Scott, like the last thing I want is to turn this into a public feud. Right. You know, I was like, I, I don't have a desire for that. I don't want this to be the two of us warring. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where sometimes, I, you know, and again, I don't know Scott's motivations. I don't, I, I can't get into his head. Um, but I sometimes think to myself, like, you know, does he read into what i'm saying that i don't want to do and and thinking that that's going to be the way to kind of scare me off you know i said i don't want this to be a public feud so is he thinking well if he makes it public that i'll just back off and i'm like well i don't want it to be a public feud but if you're going to call me names in public i'm gonna i'm not gonna say away. something back <laughs> right you yeah. know well and it's almost i i almost feel like it's more of a uh this idea of anything for relevancy type of thing it's like right. this is a way to, you know, controversy drives traffic. I mean, and 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 again, one of the one of the podcast interviews he did that he he talks pretty pretty pointedly about it. Like, oh, I'm the king of controversy or, or something like yeah, that. He, it's he, like, he's yeah, proud of that. and he's been proud he's of that proud for, of for years. Right. I'm stirring up controversy, and it's like you're not really stirring up controversy. You're just you're causing problems where there don't need to be any. Right. Um, you know, I mean, and and the thing is that what what's it doing for him? You know, he's clinging to the last little shreds of relevancy here. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody's listening to him anymore. I mean, he's just and and I mean, people. The thing about the the way that this feud has gone is people that were on his side at the beginning of it have have switched sides, yeah. have have said, "Oh, that's no, this is too much." you know, and I think that's rather telling, you know? Yeah. When all I have to do to 
to take people from his side is just say, here's everything he said to me. Here's the receipts. <laughs> you know, here's the receipts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because again, I, I, you know, in my article, I really try not to editorialize. Sure. I, I try to just say, here's what happened. Um, I don't call him any names. I don't, I try, don't try to attribute any meaning to his actions. I just say, here's what happened. And then here's what happened. And then, you know, at the end of it, I do say, you know, his story keeps changing because mm -hmm. his story does keep changing. Right. And you can prove that. Yeah. yeah you right. have the proof to back right. up that, that claim. Yeah. So, and at, at at this point, what, where do you, where do you go from here? Honestly, I don't really know. Um, so right now there are three claims in on his channel, mm -hmm. um, which means his channel is again, marked to be terminated. It wasn't what I wanted, but at this time I'm also not, in a position where I feel comfortable relinquishing my claims um, because all he's doing is using his channel as a, as a platform to attack me. Right. Um, so it's not in my best interest, you know, well, and his, his, his track record doesn't support. He's, he's going to keep you, you've, right. you've, you've acquiesced to what he, he asked you to do the first time you've rescinded. The right. Claims and, yeah. And you saw what he did with it. Yeah. I mean, and the thing was the first time he didn't even, you know, it, it took forever for him to even acknowledge that the reason he got his channel back at all was because I rescinded my claims. Right. There's lots of, oh, I campaigned with YouTube and all you guys really helped me out. And it's like, no, literally the only reason you got your channel back was because I dropped was trying to work with you. Like that. Yeah. I was trying to work with you. If I hadn't tried to work with you, you would, you'd have nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, so this time around, I, I don't know. I mean, the one thing I do know is, you know, from my side, I know that he's submitted counter notifications on the three that are still standing. And I know that at least one of them has been outright rejected by YouTube. Okay. So uh, I don't know about the other two. I just know that I got the counter notification on one. Um, and then I got a, I got a follow up from, from YouTube telling me to disregard. Okay. Um, so I don't, you know, again, I don't know if that means that YouTube has reviewed his account again and has decided that he doesn't have a claim. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah. His post on his on his YouTube community thing, um, he he says that emailing YouTube will not help and that I'm the only one that can do anything. Okay. So that says to me that maybe there maybe he's not getting traction i don't know so hmm. All right. ultimately i kind of want to be done with it <laughs> yeah know? it's been it's been three months of my life now um and every time i think i'm done he drags me back in somehow right um and i know people are gonna hear me say i want to be done and, and tell me that you know and, and say oh well then he should just stop making the claims um uh, but you still have the right to make claims for you. Right. Paper, which yeah. That's what started this whole thing. Right. Again, I'm just I'm just asking for credit. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well. Hopefully, you know, hearing your side of the story and will help, you know, and in some way. It, but at the very least, it's out there. Yeah. You know, I mean and in other other ways. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of traction on. Um, I've, had, I've had a couple people um, who've been really, really, um, really, really good about just posting links to my about Spectre Creative post all over the place, um, and that's definitely been helping because I know a lot of people are seeing that post for the first time and going, "Oh, okay, maybe it's not what Scott's saying it is. Right. Maybe it's not, you know, there's more to this." Uh, yeah, maybe there is another side. Um, yeah. And that gives me hope. It, it definitely gives me hope. I've had a, a handful of people that knew nothing of me prior to this situation who have reached out to me to let me know that, you know, they're on my side. Yeah. And I mean, it does make me feel better. 
one of the things I've definitely had to kind of train myself up on is that Scott's supporters are very loud, um, yes. but they are they're not a particularly big group, or mm -hmm. at least the ones of them that are willing to to reach out on a particularly big group. So yeah, it's a it's I just a, kind of have to hold on to that. Yeah, it's a vo vocal minority. Yeah, I mean that's really it. So, okay, well. Um, is there anything else you would like to add before we kind of end things, wrap things up? I don't think so. I think, I think you know, I kind of talked the whole the whole thing over. It's it's a lot. Yeah. Um, there's so many pieces to it, and it's you know you can't really condense it down to. I mean, I guess you could say, well, Scott's not very good at attribution, but that's <laughs> that's really it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but other than that, you know, I think I'm I'm just kind of ready to get back to my little my own little world where I just I just write about toys every day, yeah. and you know I don't have to worry about whether whether the new comment on my on my latest review is somebody who's actually read my review or somebody who just wants, wants to, to call me a punk. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was my that was my favorite um, anti me uh, comment. By the way, was the <laughs> one that told me I was a, I was a real punk. Um, oh. I like it because of the of the ambiguous syntax of it. Because I was like, is this like um is this an old person like you punk kind of punk? Or alternatively, is this a fellow punk who's like you're a real punk? Like you're part of the crew. Yeah, yeah. you're one of us. It's it's probably the old person mentality, but I like to think that it's the it's the cool guy one, you know. There you go. There you I'm, go. I like I'm that. A real punk. I just wanted to <laughs> I just wanted to respond to it with a with a gif of spider punk from the across the yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice okay but, well thanks for taking the time to sit down with me and absolutely yeah uh, well thanks for thanks for having me and and being willing to to listen to my side of the story as sure. long and winding as it may be <laughs> that's okay well, it's always good to have all sides so um yeah so people out there watching uh go take a look at ethan's website and read through you know the article he put out and and look at the evidence that he's posted the screenshots and you know make your own come to your own conclusion about what's been going on um but i will you know advocate for kindness to people watching this video uh please be kind there's no we don't need to be nasty. Yeah, I mean, um, I, absolutely. I, I, I don't want like I think you know from all those. It's like I don't want to be like oh attack Scott or anything. Right. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah. And let's I, make that very clear. We don't want people attacking Scott. We don't want people attacking that junk man or any other yeah. you know podcast or channel that has covered this. Um, just be kind. Yeah. So absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, and hope you have a good night. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys.